I've made it my personal challenge this summer to endure the sweltering 100 degree plus afternoon temperatures completely without air conditioning. And my method for cooling the house that doesn't require any monetary expenditure and very little time expenditure is a homemade whole house fan or attic fan. Now to construct my fan, I'm using an old box fan. You'll recall this is the same box fan that I used in my homemade evaporative cooler video. That kind of got mixed reviews on YouTube because I was spraying water at an electric motor. Some people didn't think that was the greatest idea. I thought it was fine and I didn't kill myself. The fan works as good as ever despite the fact that I accidentally kicked it a few months ago, hurt my big toe, and chewed up one of the blades. Uh, roll footage. Right here. Yeah, I kicked this last year with my big toe and it cracked this blade and cracked the grate here and ouch, ouch, ouch. That thing just sliced and diced my toe. But it still works fine. I didn't want to use my evaporative cooler because we live in a house now that has a lot of carpet on the entryways and I'm afraid that if I use that wet evaporative cooler in front of carpet, wetness and carpet just aren't really my thing when you put the two together. So I'm not using that method this year, but this requires no water, very little electricity, and the theory is hot air rises so that when I turn this on, it sucks all the hot air out of the house, up through the attic vents, and pulls the cool air through the windows once the sun goes down and it gets cooler outside, and it cools the house. Because even though the temperatures outside get to be 100 plus degrees, in the daytime, in the evening, it cools down to a really nice 65, 70 degrees. So if I can get the house that low, I'll be fine. Then the next morning, I'll shut everything up, and the temperature may creep up a little bit, but I should be okay. I should be able to persevere, sweat it out, pun intended, and make it through the summer. So let's see how this thing works. The construction of the attic fan is simply a piece of plywood that I had laying around on the side of the house that was just adding to the visual detriment of the neighborhood, so the tidy police should be happy that I got rid of it and I cut out a hole that was big enough for the fan to draw some air through, yet small enough that the fan could rest on top of it. I put that piece of plywood cut to fit in the crawl space, put the fan on top of it, and I have a power cord running down from a plug that's up in the attic. It's the same plug that the air conditioner was plugged into up there, but I'm not using that this year. I unplugged the AC, plugged this in, and I have the fan turned on right now, but the switch is inaccessible because it's up here. So this is my power switch, just the extension cord. So I'll just plug this in and... That's my attic fan. Now to give you an idea of just what we're dealing with here, I'm going to give it the ribbon test. Now you see this? I have one door open on the other side of the house so that it can pull that air in through here, up through the attic, eliminating all that yucky hot air that's accumulated during the day. Okay, now watch this. See, I, I can feel the air. Ooh, look at that. That fan means business, ladies and gentlemen. Crack blade and all. So I'll just leave that on from the time that the temperature outside drops just below the temperature inside, right around 7 o'clock, 7.30, I'm turning this thing on, I'll drop the inside temperatures during the night, and then I'll turn it off in the morning, shut all the windows, and let it ride throughout the entire day, and hopefully by the end of the day, the inside temperature will be still bearable and the cycle repeats. So hopefully, 
this method will be able to save me from using that nasty AC and maybe I'll save a little bit of money on my summer cooling bills. Thanks for watching.